Well, you guys are superhero VBS attenders. This is day four. We are so sad it's day four and this is our last day, but we are excited that you've came to every single day of VBS and have been learning about some unlikely heroes. Well, I hope you're ready. I hope you know what's coming. We are gonna be chanting VBS as loud as we can. And you better make it count because this is our last day of VBS together. So, the letters are gonna come up on the screen. If you need to brace yourself on your chair, if you need to stand up, if you need to give yourself some space, if you need to stretch, do it now because I want to be able to hear you so clearly that I'm thinking you're screaming into my ears right next to me. You ready? Here we go. V, B, S, V, B, S. Wow, guys, that's so, so good. But I want to do it one more time. I want all your neighbors around you to know that you are on your last day of VBS and that you've been learning so much. So let's do it one more time, okay? Here come the letters. V, B, S, V, B, S. That was as if you were right next to me. I, I think my hearing's gone a little bit. You were so loud and good. Well, every day you've been getting memory verses. And I imagine you've been doing such a great job. Actually, I know you have. And if you don't have all of them memorized, that's okay. Keep practicing. But on our last day, let's do the memory verse we got yesterday. Let's do it together for one last time. You're going to get a minute to find someone in your house to grab a Bible, follow you on the verse as you say it from memory, and then we'll say it together. So take the time to say it from memory now. Great job. If you don't have it fully memorized yet, that's okay. Keep practicing because it's going to be good for the rest of your life to have that verse memorized. But let's say that verse now together. So, our memory verse from yesterday, which will be on the screen, is Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Great job. I look forward to hearing your last memory verse today. So before we get to those lessons and that memory verse, let's sing our final song together. This song, Our Help, is about the help that Jesus promised to his disciples and to us after he resurrected from the dead and after or just before he ascended to heaven to be seated at the right hand of the Father, he promised that he would send a helper. He promised that he would send the Holy Spirit to help us, to guide us, to live within us for those of us that believe in the saving work of Jesus Christ. And so that's what this song is about. And we're going to teach you the motions to this song that we're going to sing during the chorus. So our help... And do your hand like this. We're going to draw it into ourselves. So this is the uh, sign language for help. We're going to draw it in because he is our help. Our help to understand your word. Our help who gives us strength to serve. Our help so we can love you more. 
We need your Holy Spirit, Lord. And for Lord, you bring an L down like you're putting a seatbelt on like this. All right, let's sing that together. Jesus, when you left, you didn't leave us on our own. You said you'd send your spirit so we'd never be alone. A guide on this adventure to help us grow in holiness. A true and living compass who leads us to what's best. Our help to understand your word Our help who gives us strength to serve Our help so we can love you more We need your Holy Spirit, Lord Your Spirit lives inside And he points us to your truth Shining like a flashlight, revealing more of you. He fills us with your love, Lord, and he's come to guarantee that God is always with us, and he will always be our help to understand your word, our help who gives us strength to serve, our help so we can love you more. We need your Holy Spirit, Lord. Our help to understand your word, our help who gives us strength to serve, our help so we can love you more we need your holy spirit our help to understand your word our help who gives us strength to serve our help so we can love you more we need your holy spirit Lord. Wow, I hope you've been enjoying those songs. You've been doing a great job singing in your houses. I bet some of these songs will stick in your parents' heads for the rest of the week, as they should. Good for them. So, here is your last lesson. You will be going with Mr. Trevor, our last superhero teacher. We'll be going with him to learn about our last unlikely hero, Samson. You're going to be learning about how God is king of over mistakes. I don't know about you, but I make a lot of mistakes. Just ask my wife. I am not a superhero all the time. But we are so glad that we have a hope that God is king over our mistakes. So you're going to go with Mr. Trevor, and he's going to be teaching you about our last unlikely hero, Samson. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. The BSN Vacation Bible School News, presented by Tim Bertonowski, VBSN. Now to you, Tim. Hello, I'm Tim Bertonowski with VBSN Vacation Bible School News. And today we'll be covering the story of Samson, found in Judges chapters 13 through 16. And we'll be talking about how he thought his sin was no big deal and how it cost him everything. So, our story takes place within the cycle of sin in Judges. So in Judges, Israel would do what is evil in the sight of the Lord. And Israel is then oppressed. Israel then cries out to God. God then raises up a judge to deliver Israel from their oppression. And the Lord then delivers his people and there is peace. So where our story picks up is with the Philistines suppressing Israel because Israel was doing evil in the sight of the Lord. 
And so the Lord, through his parents, raise up Samson. And today we have with us Samson's mother, and we now go to a live interview with her. Ma'am, can you tell us exactly how Samson was born? So I was barren, and my husband and I could not have children. But one day, an angel of God appeared and told me that I was going to conceive a son, and that he was going to be a Nazarite. A Nazarite is someone who is set aside by God, and they have to live a life a certain way. So I was told that my son could not eat anything unclean or drink wine, nor could he cut his hair or touch a dead body. The angel also told me that my son was going to save Israel from the Philistines. And sure enough, nine months later, I gave birth to a son and I named him Samson. The Lord really blessed him as he grew. But because of what the angel said to my husband and me, we had such high expectations for Samson. And we knew he was going to be a great man who lived for God and who would be a great leader for Israel and lead us out of the hands of the Philistines. Sounds like there was quite a bit of expectations put on Samson, having to live for the Lord and also deliver his people from the Philistines. So as Samson grew, he then took interest in a young Philistine woman and wanted to marry her. Keep in mind, he never once had a conversation with her, nor knew her at all. Huh. So, despite his father's wishes against it, his father desired for Samson to get married to an Israelite woman, Samson still decided to go through with marriage with this Philistine woman. And keep in mind, the Philistine culture was quite evil and quite wicked. And that's why the Philistines were not God's people. Now, Samson was gifted with the strength. Now, Samson was gifted by God with super strength. That is important to note. As Samson was going down to see his bride-to-be, he was attacked by a lion out of nowhere. And Samson, using his strength, proceeded to rip the lion apart with his bare hands. Later on, as Samson came across the carcass of the lion just lying there, he saw that a beehive was formed within the carcass of the lion. Samson then proceeded to scoop out honey from this beehive and ate it, and even brought some to his parents to eat. Keep in mind that Samson's Nazarite vow made it so he was not supposed to touch a dead body. So, as Samson was returning to his bride, he came across some Philistine men and decided to make a bet with them. We have an exclusive scoop with one of these men that Samson made this bet with. Sir, what can you tell us happened here? Yeah, so uh, like Tony and I and my buddies and I were just going to this, this marriage feast or, or whatever when, when Samson stopped us and he was like, hey, you want to make a bet? And so he said that he was going to tell us a riddle and that if we could figure it out, the riddle, within seven days, then he would give us 30, like, linens and, like, changes of clothes or whatever. And, and if we couldn't guess it, then we would have to give him 30 changes of clothes. I, I don't even know what he needs 30 changes of clothes for, but we figured, you know, yeah, there's like, there's, like, 30 of us, and we're all pretty smart guys, so... We're like, we can figure out this, this riddle. And so, yeah, we'll take your bet. And so Samson said, said this riddle and was like, out of the eater came something to eat. Out of the strong came something sweet. So, yeah, we couldn't figure it out. And uh, so we went, we went to, to Samson's new, new woman, his, his wife or whatever, and like totally guilt tripped her like crazy to tell us what it was. And so, yeah, so she told us the answer was, what is sweeter than honey and what is stronger than a lion? 
so yeah, kind of a kind of a weird riddle. Don't really don't really get it. But anyway, we told we told uh, Samson, you know, the answer and and won the bet or whatever. And so he uh, he was pretty ticked. But now now he owes us uh, 30, 30 pairs of clothes. So yeah. Say, you seem really familiar. Do I know you from somewhere? Nah. Nah. Huh. Anyways. So, Samson lost this bet with his friends. They're not his friends. Alright. So, thus Samson lost this bet and owed these men 30 garments of clothing. So Samson ended up going to the nearby town of Ashkelon and killed 30 men and took the clothing from them to pay up for the bet. So ultimately Samson lost the bet to these Philistines and went to their countrymen, murdered them in order to give them what they were owed. That is, uh, that's pretty messed up. So, Samson went to a return to his wife to find that his wife's father thought that Samson hated her so much that he actually gave his daughter to marriage to Samson's best man. And as a result, Samson was furious about this and captured 300 foxes and tied them together. And he also tied torches to them. He then sent them running through their grain fields and their olive orchards, and they all burned down. The Philistines, to get revenge on Samson for this horrendous act, then tracked him down, a thousand Philistine men, and they intended to kill Samson. However, Samson, using the, 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 okay, the jawbone of a donkey, um, ended up killing all of them instead. Huh. After this, many years passed and Samson continued to live life. So after this, Samson continued to live life for his own purposes and his own desires and judged Israel for several years. After some time had passed, Samson then fell in love with an, yet another Philistine woman named Delilah. We were actually able to track down Delilah, and we will now go to a live interview with her. So, Miss Delilah, what exactly happened between you and Samson? Okay, so yeah, the Samson guy totally fell in love with me, which isn't surprising, but then out of nowhere, these Philistines came up to me and offered me a bunch of money, um, if I could tell them what Samson's weakness was. Uh, so obviously I took the money because Samson was kind of a jerk anyway. But yeah, he kept telling me um, fake answers to what his weakness was. So first he told me that if he's tied up with seven fresh bowstrings, then he would become weak. Uh, but then uh, when I tied him up, nothing happened. He was still super strong. And then he told me that if he was tied up with new ropes that hadn't been used, then he would become weak. But then again, after I tied him up, nothing happened. So he lied to me again. And then he said that if I did his hair in a certain way, that he would lose all his power. But after that, I did his hair, still nothing happened. So yeah, he lied to me a third time. Uh, but finally, I gave him like a super big guilt trip about it and how he and how he didn't really love me or whatever and that got him to tell me his secret um, and so finally um, his I figured out that his strength came from his hair so when he fell asleep me and a few others shaved his head and he totally became powerless so yeah then the Philistines captured him and took him away and I got my money after Samson's hair was cut Philistine men then came and gouged out Samson's eyes now that Samson's strength had left him and captured him. I bet you Samson didn't see that one coming. <laughs> Samson was then brought before a loud... Okay. 
Samson was then brought before a large crowd of Philistines in a house. There was about 3,000 Philistine men and women present, and they cried out that they wanted Samson brought out to entertain them. So Samson was then chained between two pillars of this house, and then cried out to the Lord, saying, O Lord God, please remember me, and please strengthen me only this once, O God, that I may be avenged on the Philistines for my two eyes. Samson then pushed with all of his might on the pillars, saying, Let me die with the Philistines. And the whole house fell down on everyone who was in it, and killed them, including Samson. It was then reported that in his death, Samson actually killed more Philistines than he had in his life. We have actually put together a recreation of this event that we'll now go to. So here, representing Samson, we have Leonardo the Ninja Turtle, and everyone else represents the Philistine people inside the house. So Samson leaned up against these pillars that he was chained to and pushed with all his might, <laughs> causing the whole house to fall down and kill them. So Samson, who was set aside for God and for his purposes, who was meant to deliver Israel, he actually ended up treating sin as like it was no big deal. And he actually lived for the world that he was sent to free his people from. And, you know, as a result, that ultimately led to Samson dying. And so just like Samson, we are set aside for God and we are called to, to live life for him and go out and, and preach the good news of Jesus Christ and how he died for our sins in order to save other people from the world. Now, the world, just like with Samson, the world does distract us and we do get off track sometimes. But we know that God is king even over our mistakes. And that is very important to remember because even at the very end of the story, Samson, despite making all the, these mistakes and living very selfishly, God still used him. God still used him to kill all the Philistines and, and deliver his people from that. So it's very important to, for us to remember that God is sovereign, which means that he is in control of everything and that he has a plan in place and that he is in fact king even over our mistakes. And so our memory verse today is Romans 8:28 which says this. And we know that for those who love God all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. Let's pray. Dear Lord, just thank you so much for this opportunity to look at the story of Samson and see how the world tempts us and how the world makes us want to live according to it. But Lord, thank you so much that you love us in such a way that you died for our sins and that you are in control so that the mistakes we have made, you still use for your glory. We love you, Lord, and I pray that you can show us and teach us how to love you more. Amen. Welcome back. I hope that you have learned so much about how God uses the most unlikeliest of people to be heroes in his great story and how the greatest unlikely hero is Jesus Christ, who is king over death. And if you believe in him, if you confess that he's the son of God and believe that he rose again from the dead to be king over death, then he will be king of your life. You will be saved by that unlikely hero. Well, we're excited to have our last memory verse. There's, there's four of them, so you've got a lot of learning to do with those and keep practicing them. And let's do this last memory verse together. Our last memory verse is Romans 8, 28. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called to his purpose. That is a great verse for us to, to end on, to remember what all we've learned this week about our unlikely heroes. You remember we learned with Ehud that God 
is king over weaknesses. We learn with Deborah and Barak that God is king over fear and faithlessness. We learned with Gideon that God is king over doubt. And we just learned with Samson that God is king over mistakes. But ultimately, all these pointed to that Jesus is king over death. What great news that is. And you know what? God wants to use you in his story. You, you can be an unlikely hero. He wants to use you, a part of his story, to bring glory to his story, to his kingdom, to show his glory in the world to others so they can come and know Jesus Christ as their king of their lives. Quickly, like we do every year, there's a couple people we want to thank. We want to thank all of your teachers for taking time this summer to put these lessons together, working really hard on them. We want to thank Tyler Shaw for doing the recordings and helping make sure all this was put together in a way that is engaging for you, that you love to sit and watch. We want to thank Robin for her time, for organizing and putting all these pieces together. Sarah Jensen for reaching out and helping, helping getting teachers involved. And we want to thank Grant, Adelie, and Claire for putting together the songs and leading us, some, leading us in them this past week. We'd also like to thank, I'd like to thank, Lisa Branham for making this awesome Unlikely Heroes cape. Now, this, there's a U and an H right here that stand for Unlikely Heroes. So thank you, Lisa, for making this cape. And I want to thank you for letting me hang out with you this past week. I'm getting to have fun playing with all of Asa's toys. We need to thank Asa for letting us play with his toys this week. So thank you so much for joining us for VBS. We want you to know that we love you, we miss you, and we're praying for you. And we pray that you come to trust in the unlikely hero, Jesus Christ. Christ. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the saving work of the unlikely hero, Jesus Christ, that he lived a perfect life on our behalf, that he is the perfect superhero. And he went to the cross, died, and conquered the worst enemy, sin, death, and Satan. We thank you for this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. We hope to see you at church. We hope to see you here in the fall. And we miss all of you. Bye. Hello, VBS and Likely Heroes participants. For those of you that like to do crafts, we have chosen one to accompany each lesson. For Ehud, an origami sword. For Gideon, a paper tube trumpet. For Deborah and Barak, a paper cup chariot. And for Samson, a woven mat. All the materials can probably be found around your house, but be creative and improv improvise if you need to. For example, I'm thinking the origami uh, instructions would call for origami paper, but that is something you don't need. You can use any kind of paper, newspaper, magazines, whatever. Just be creative. There are video instructions then with each link, and all but one will guide you step by step. Deborah and Barack's chariot is the one without instructions, just a photo. If you look closely, you'll be able to figure it out. So have fun and let your imagination guide you. Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. Welcome to church. My name's Carrie, and I wish my arms looked like this. I do not be bothered by my pirate patch, and no, I'm not doing a Thor impression. Welcome to CTR. Good morning, this is a time, well, sorry, good morning, my name is Pastor Jay, and this is a time where we do our morning confession, and I must confess that my arms can do this cool thing. There you have it, take that. So, so seriously, he, like, Groot would not let you use one of his twigs for a s'more stick? Like, he just wouldn't let you borrow one? I don't know, man, I, I, I'm with, I think that's pretty selfish. Like... Does it hurt him still if you're if that's like if they're like burning or something? You just want to make a s'more on the Fourth of July? And he wouldn't let you do that. Were trees even in that, were there other trees as an option? No. And all he kept telling you was, "I am Groot." That. Yeah, I, I I think yeah I get it. I get why you might be frustrated. All right, hey, thanks guys. Thanks for coming uh, to our. Uh, VBS 2020 
gathering com uh, planning committee. Sorry, thanks for joining us kind of last minute here. Uh, before we get going on the meeting, I'm, I'm going to take a quick roll call and make sure we got everyone here. Uh, Spider-Man, good to see you. Glad you're here. Uh, Groot, yes, we know your name's Groot. Good. Uh, Captain America 1, thank you. Uh, Captain America number 2, thank you. Uh, Iron Man. Iron Man? Uh, uh, Iron Man? Okay, everyone know, like, does anyone know where Iron Man is? He knows we weren't going to be at Stark Enterprise for this, right? Man, the whole game I launch again. What am I going to do? Everyone knows that? All right, someone, someone text him. Okay, uh, Batman, Golden Batman, thank you. Small anime Batman, thank you. Uh, ancient uh, Bible characters, you even made it. Iron Man can't make it, okay. 